You better quit wandering off. I don't have to come looking for you again. You should be within shouting difference. I noticed something else I wanted to point out. On this later uh, AS21 case, look at where all the case savers are. These are where the head studs go. They have blind case savers from the factory. Isn't that sweet? Now you look at this old one that had been modified. Somebody had put the case savers in there. They're open and that's why a lot of guys have to seal them to keep the oil from weeping through there. That's that old junk case. But uh, I thought that was worth uh, mentioning. Sometimes I figure everybody knows this stuff already but what I've done is taken this back bearing and I put the pin in the bottom, set it all the way down in there, and then I took this small scribe. This was out of my father's uh, carpenter square. And I just scratch a line right at the case parting line on both sides, nice and deep, so that I can see it. So later on, this is a really tight fit and bearing. Man, he made this thing tight, which is good. You can see where he cut the back of the bearing over here to custom fit it so they removed as much as material as possible from the case itself and uh, when you're assembling your case and trying to get it set on that pin sometimes it's difficult to feel and this uh, the lines will help you know in your mind where you're at because you don't want to be pushing down and forcing things you don't want to you don't want to be forcing stuff most uh, most of these little tri-squares have a scribe in them. Right. The moment of truth. I should have this set down. It, it's a tight fit back here and you have to have this nose up where it needs to be. I left that front bearing off just because I'm trying to I'm going to do a deck height measurement but I did take uh, this is a trick I, little, I learned from the boss. Take that center bearing and, and you set it in place and when you can't when it's tight and it doesn't rock, click, 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 you know you're all the way in there. And this one here, I'm looking for my, looking for my lines on both sides, and I'm looking at the space around here. You can kind of get it if you could get that pin off, see, and you're thinking you're in, and then you go to assemble your case and you squeeze it, and you you de deform that bearing. Let me put you on the. Stand here. Sorry about the clitty clitty clackety, but uh, it feels so nice. Put a little bit of lube on everything, and uh, it should it should just turn real easy, either direction, and you should have your a little bit of end play. That's what you want, just like that. Now I'm going to put my other case half on there lightly. This isn't, we're just messing around. We're just going to try to get some clearance measurements. Alright, here's the bad boy in question. Assuming some of you have never done this before, you want to look at the slot in the end of your camshaft, make the rear lobe point down, put your red, see this has got a red timing mark, and that goes to the top. Top with the back lobe down. Now see, if you rotate it, there's a bolt hole at the top, but you're over here at two, uh, 20 after, and, and that would throw all your valve timing completely in the toilet. So, up and down, red mark, that gets us in the ballpark. Now, this style of uh, gear has straight through washers, eccentric washers on either side to adjust the timing and it only alters it like two or three degrees and it probably wouldn't make a difference on a mild cam like this FK7 but I think we'll just go with center to mock it up because it really won't make any difference what actually holds this center, this you see it here is it kinda recessed area so that's gonna keep it in center you don't want to reuse the put old bolts in here because they will stretch 
you want to use new bolts for your final assembly. Here's those uh, washers I was telling you about. You see how they're off center? But they do fit down in the hole. These are nice. They're not junk. These are pretty. This is from uh, AA. Um, it came with the straight cut cam gears. And you can see they're steel and they're made very nice. There's different degrees here of advance. This, this washer would be for one and then this washer would be for the other to advance or retard how much you want how much you want to do it let me uh, let me show you a picture in a book okay straight from the Jeanberg blue book this is your camshaft and you can see it right there advance to the left retard to the right with the timing marks lined up that's how it would be positioned in the engine cam on the bottom crank on top alright and there's your degrees uh, because uh, Jeanberg did sell the straight cut cam gears. We should probably just go through here and read an article or two. Here's the uh, suggestion to uh, clearance the head and cut the groove for the lifter. He's talking about it right here. Drawing pictures, making it simple. And I don't think of many... <laughs> new ideas. I just do a lot of research and study and here's the uh, full flow filter installation uh, that we made the video of and I I used a Jeanberg valve tool to do the cut where it says clearance. Pretty cool, huh? Oil pump cover. Here's how you uh, here's how you blueprint a pump and how you measure the pump for clearance for the early and the late. Yeah, we'll go through all of this stuff here. Disclaimer. Always got to have the disclaimer in there. I'm not responsible for your stupidity. Everybody has to do that, especially nowadays. Even back then they had to do it, huh? Yeah, good time to mention my disclaimer. Don't do as I do or what I say. Think for yourself. That's what I want to tell you. Think for yourself. Watch everybody. But the only way you get experience is to make a decision and then live with the results. And it is not the end of the world if it fails. It just means you learn something firsthand. And it might apply to a different situation. Don't be paralyzed with fear of screwing up. It's just a few dollars in material. All right, I've got the uh, used cam bearings in. Trial fit for the straight cut gears <laughs> it's tight don't breathe where are you? I'm trying to look <laughs> I'm look, trying to look down the barrel. No sealer, just a trial fit. Wow. That's kind of nice. No cam thrust in it. We're just feeling here. So, we've got Nice, smooth motion. And uh, I think I'm going to put the uh, case bolts on and torque them down to 20 pounds and see what we got. We'll start with uh, 15. This is going to tell me whether the line bore on the case was good to this crank. If the crankshaft's straight and the guy did a good job on the case, then we continue on. If not, 
We have to make some decisions. Okay, there's 15. We still have nice smooth rotation. Feels good. I don't have that little front bearing on, but I'm not worried about that. So let's go up. Let's go up to 20. What? Yeah, I think we'll go to. Let's we'll go to 20. We're we're feeling our way along. You have to learn to speak Volkswagen. That's part of this whole drill, is to learn how to speak Volkswagen, because this thing is talking to you the whole time. Every single thing you do, you feel yourself along. Listen to what it's saying to you. I'm happy or I'm sad. What's it going to be? Alright. 20 pounds. One time. Let's see if she wants to move. Yeah, baby. I think we got ourselves a good one here, boys. We got, we got in play. We got, it's easy to rotate. I just don't have any strength in my wrist. Alright, so the next thing is to slide on a cylinder. See what we're going to come out for uh, clearance on our rotating parts. And what kind of headspace we're going to need. Got a little oil in the connecting rod. And it seemed to stop, and it seems to stop right where the oil hole is. So there must be a burr. We're going to pause for station identification while I deburr. I guess uh, it would be a station identification. This would probably be a shout out for AA products. I like them. I've been using them. Sometimes I didn't even know it. Uh, probably did have a burr if it's a little snug on that cam or that wrist pin. Temperature really affects this stuff. <clears throat> Now, I don't need to put the snap ring in. I'm just going for uh, fit. I don't care where they are, as long as they're not wadded up. I like to watch, look for that end of that oil ring and make sure that it's not. Um, it needs to be butted up. They can't. Sometimes they'll accidentally overlap. I gotta get a 90,000 spacer. That was my uh, first guess. So, uh, this is a shorter connecting rod. It's a 5.325 I beam chromoly rod. And that's gonna pull the piston down because we're stroked it up 74. A millimeter is 40 thousandths. So, there's almost 80 thousandths the other way. Why didn't you say something? I put that on number. One engine was upside down. Now we have to do it all over again. Point this to the flywheel. I've got a 90,000 steel spacer. The radius side is going to go up towards the uh, cylinder because it's got a little bit of a radius. I almost feel like I should deburr that. I might go running over the wire wheel. Doggone it, I'm sorry. Details. You just. Pay attention to the details. The big problems will take care of themselves. Alright, I just took it over to the wire wheel. Kind of just took the burr off. These are stamped out. Now, look at that compared to this one. It's a hundred thousandths. This is the Gene Berg Blanchard ground with a nice radius. Generally as a rule, generally as a rule, the more you spend, the less labor you're going to have to put into it. But it always, you always want to check. Just do it as nice as you can. And I'm going to put the, boy, that is so nice and flat. It's so much thicker. This is 30 thousandths thicker. 
It's thirty. It's only thirty thousandths thick here, but that's going in the case, and it's supported all the way around by the case. And I don't see the hole marks even wearing on regular stuff. So I don't see what the big deal is. Um. Okay, folks, we've got the case halves together and torqued down. Crankshaft is in. We've got the shorter connecting rods. We've got cylinder three on, and we're checking the deck height. We've got it where it just comes up on top. We're looking at our top dead center mark on this case half. That appears to be accurate as we look in here. And then we turn this bolt in just till it touches. You don't want to be denting the top of the piston or anything, but just where you get a contact there, and you can measure that with feeler gauges, or I'm going to take it apart and measure it, and then we can figure out uh, what our compression ratio would be. This has got one 90 thousandths shim under the barrel. I am really pleased with what I see so far. I've gone through one full rotation, and I'm looking through this little uh, window in the uh, in the crank here you can see the counterweight now it's at the full extended version so I'm going to rotate it down and around now you see the uh, opposite rod come down and I'm I don't know if you can see it I'm looking for a piston I'm looking for contact. Ooh, I feel something there. I do feel something here. I didn't before. So that may be a piston skirt. There's something touching here. That may mean that I have to uh, do some clearancing. I need at least a millimeter, 40 thousandths, from any possible points of contact. Alright guys, here's where the contact is. The counterweight of the crankshaft. Let's see, what are you looking at here? Okay, right down here. Got the piston skirt is making contact with the counterweight comes up. There it is right there on both sides. See where it's right uh, right down here. Right down there. So I'm going to mark it with a magic marker. Now we're 12 degrees from bottom dead center on the split of the case approximately. So we don't have far to go. We won't have to take off much but we're going to have to do it and that's why we do the trial fit. So I'm going to mark it with a magic marker, take it apart, cut a little bit off the piston until I got a millimeter of clearance and we'll take it from there. Okay, there you see the finished product. I don't know if I can rock this very much and let you see. See, the piston's already starting to go down. I got a connecting rod laying in the wrong spot here. This gets caught on everything. See, this one right here, this is why you have to clearance your connecting rod. See where this is hitting down there? It's close, but it clears. And this is what you have to check. I probably could have just nicked the corner off of that thing. I took off probably a lot more than I should have or needed to. But I don't think I compromised anything. And same thing goes for where is it here? This corner, right down here. See? Now even and you have to take into account the thrust on the crankshaft as well. Oops. I took the pole apart. Ooh, look at that. All of a sudden, all that extra space kind of went away, huh? Let's 
so you know you want to make sure you have the, the proper clearance so that as the engine wears you don't start getting contact and then have metal flying around in your case alright now you say boy that's an awful lot of trouble wouldn't it have been easier to just uh, choose a different combination? Probably would have. I didn't really set out with this in mind, but I ended up here, and it seems like uh, I recall back on my 2110, I also had to clearance that C35 cam that I had purchased. That took a long time to do that too. So it's just a matter of being careful and taking your time. If you don't have that kind of personality or attitude, then you might as well not even start. Uh, work with the conventional combinations, a 1776, but you'll have to have that case machined. You may not have anybody in your area that can. You could order the case that way. You have so many variables, so many options, it depends on what you want to do. I want to keep the case stock. This is an experiment. I ordered the wrong heads by mistake. I didn't want to just have them sitting around. So I ordered pistons and barrels to match the heads in the case. One thing leads to another. I've got time. It's my experiment. I'm okay with it. And we're moving forward like the way the uh, cam gears, I have zero thrust, I'm going to have to work on that but I seem to in every position now you don't want to just check this in one spot you want to move it an inch and check it again, move it an inch and check it again I may pull this gear off the crankshaft and stick a helical gear just to see if one of the gears that I have might work, the, the one that came on this case might do that as an experiment I haven't decided yet but it's coming along. Alright guys. We got a mock up. We've got our pistons for cylinders 3 and 4 trimmed. Just putting a cylinder head on there for giggles. Keep the dust out overnight. And uh, I think I'm going to call this a wrap. It's coming together pretty nice. With the exception of those pistons, it's just a, a matter of uh, very little. If a guy had a file and some patience, that would happen just fine. Just fine. And uh, I'm very pleased with how it's gone so far. I still have a lot of options as, uh, as far as compression goes. I'm seeing it today as a 1800cc engine. And I like it. Yeah. So, I know it was a long video. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.